If you would please turn in your bulletins to where today's scripture lessons are printed. We have a scripture from the sixth chapter of Matthew and then another scripture from the 21st chapter of John. Reading first from Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Then from the 21st chapter of John, verses 20 through 23. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumor spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? May God bless this reading of the scripture to our hearing and our understanding and the living of our faith. Would you bow your heads? Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. If you're a fan of Dr. Phil, you will recognize the sermon title today. Dr. Phil is famous for saying to someone who has been living their life in a destructive manner, how's that working for you? Remember a few weeks ago I mentioned counselors know the value of a good question. A good question is often more valuable than good advice because it causes the person to think, how does my worrying help me? How's that working for me? In our scripture from Matthew today, we see not just a good question, but a great question. In the version of scripture that I read, it says, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? On the front of your bulletin, you will notice by worrying, can you add a single cubit to your span of life? Remember the value of a cubit, 18 inches, about a foot and a half. 
if you measure your life in miles, some of us here probably have at least 50,000 miles, don't we? Maybe some of us close to 100,000. What is a cubit, a foot and a half, to add to the span of your life? In a culture that has the pill for nearly everything, including anxiety, we still don't have a pill that will keep us from worrying, do we? A word of honesty. This past week, when Jace called me, even before I hung up, I began to worry. Some of you might remember that uh, about Four years ago, Jace had a blood clot in his leg and that blood clot broke up and those several clots went to his lungs. And we didn't know if he was going to live through the night. So when he calls and tells me that he's tested positive for COVID and we read all of these stories about how COVID affects people's lungs, I'll be honest, I worried. I worried about our son and, in, and his health. As people of faith, though, we are called not to remain in that worry, but instead move to a sense of trust. You remember old Elton Trueblood said, faith is not so much proof with, or belief without proof as it is trust without reservation. How about this? A series of questions. Do you believe more in your worry or in God's providential care? Do you believe more in your selfishness or in God's generosity? Do you believe more in your anger or God's kindness? Do you believe more in your hatred or God's love? Do you believe more in your sinfulness or God's grace? Our faith challenges us to move beyond worry to trust. Jesus said, why do you worry about what you eat, what you drink, what you wear? At that time, when Jesus said, what do you worry about what you eat? Remember, they had all kinds of rules about food that was clean and unclean. But also, he was speaking to people who worried about where their next meal was coming from. We worry about something else in terms of what we eat, don't we? We worry about eating too much. Turn on your television almost any hour of the day and you see one commercial after another about some kind of new weight loss program. Why do you worry about what you wear? I know you men who are present probably worry a lot more about what you wear than the women do. You can laugh now, it's all right. Recently, on some of the cable channels, they've been replaying that wonderful movie, the first movie that Robert Redford directed. He wasn't in the movie, but he directed the movie, his first as director. The title of the movie was ordinary people. Do you remember that? It was a very unusual role for Mary Tyler Moore. It wasn't Mary Tyler Moore who played Mary Richards, the optimistic, unsinkable Molly Brown Mary Richards. In this movie, she played the one who had to be in control and yet she realized that perhaps the thing she cared most about in her life 
she was in, unable to control. In the movie, she had two sons. They lived on Lakeshore Drive in Chicago. If you're familiar with that area of the country, that's the rich part of town. They lived in a fancy house. One day, their two teenage boys were out on Lake Michigan when a storm arose. The older son named Buck, who was the light of her life, drowned. The younger son survived, but because they were all three, the mother, the father, and the son, overwhelmed with a sense of debilitating grief, none of them was able to help the other. It was most difficult for Beth, Mary Tyler Moore's character, because the one who had always been in control suddenly lost control. On the day that they were getting ready to go attend the funeral, later in the movie, the husband said to her, do you remember what you said to me that day when we were getting ready to go to the funeral? You said my shirt might be the wrong color and then you said, you need to wear different shoes. And he said, do you remember that? We were getting ready to go bury our son and you were worried about what kind of shoes I was wearing. Why do you worry about what you wear? Alan Culpepper, has written these words that might be helpful. Faith in Jesus Christ awakens our consciousness of the spiritual dimensions of life. By so doing, faith allows and even forces us to live our lives from a new perspective. Then we can see that some of the things we have been so concerned about are not all that important. We may also see that we have not given enough attention to the important things. Family, friends, a more just and peaceful society, or our own personal intellectual and spiritual development. When the rat race of materialism threatens to control you, remember you are not the one who is in control. I suppose there is something of the control freak in each of us. This might be where the scripture from John is helpful. It might be helpful to have some background about what is being written here. Remember who wrote John's gospel, John. And when we read in John's gospel about the disciple whom Jesus loved, John is writing about himself. When John tells the story of Easter Sunday morning and John and Simon Peter running to the tomb to see the risen Christ, remember who gets there first, John. And remember who's writing the story, John. Just prior to the passage of scripture I read, we read about the encounter between the risen Christ and the disciples. Remember, Jesus is on the beach. He has grilled fish for the disciples to eat. Why do you worry about what you eat? Jesus has grilled breakfast for the disciples. Then he begins to grill Simon Peter. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I've left everything to follow you. Simon, do you love me? Feed my sheep, tend my sheep. It is immediately after this that Simon Peter still doesn't get it. And remember who's writing this story? 
Simon Peter's competitor, John. And Simon Peter says to Jesus, what about him? And he points to John. And Jesus says, what is that to you, buddy? That's a theological addition. What is that to you, Peter? You don't control John's life. What is that to you? Hear these words about a way not to worry. Our security is finally not in the stock market, which goes up and down, or in the government, which rises and falls, or in the corporations, which splits, merges, and restructures. Instead, we would do well to learn from the birds. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet God feeds them. Their patterns of behavior teach us that life is a gift, a gift to be shared, a gift to be treasured. Our true security lies in the grasp of a fundamental truth. The reign of God is near, closer than we realize. The culture and our misplaced allegiance to it has led us down the path of anxiety about the present does that sound familiar? About the future, about our possessions, about our wealth. The gospel as gift and demand is clear. God will provide for us and through us, God will provide for others. I mentioned to you before the book about what did Jesus ask. All of these wonderful questions that we have from Scripture. The very first chapter of the book is concerned with our Scripture from Matthew. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit or one hour to your span of life. And then Jesus tells a story about the birds. Barbara Brown Taylor, one of my favorite preachers and authors, says this about our scripture. Jesus was a bird of the air after all. He was a lily of the field with no place to lay his head, which may be how he got so wise about the futility of anxiety. If he was truly human, as we Christians insist he was, then he worried as much as anyone about losing what he loved. He just figured out how to let the loving surpass the losing. On days when I am having a hard time following his lead, it is sometimes enough to remember the distinction. However many hours I have to live this life with however little power to keep from losing even one of them, I do this day love being alive. 